Hi, I'm Stephen Hamm from R True Supplies, and this is the Bowtech Amplifier. Now, the Amplifier is the bottom of the range Bowtech, which doesn't mean it's bottom of the range, it just means it's the cheapest Bowtech available. Bowtech have a cheaper line called Diamond, which offer cheaper, less, expen less expensive bows. So, this is more of a mid price compound bow from Bowtech. So, let's take a look at it. Now, it comes in a couple of options. One's with a kit. This is the kit from Bowtech. Um, so it comes with a quiver, a basic three pin side, and a basic whisker biscuit. Now, as I understand, it doesn't come assembled. So one of my customers said uh, he dry fired his bow. He said it wasn't assembled, so therefore it's the factory's fault that he dry fired his bow. Um, or it might have been the peep sight wasn't tight enough, and that caused the arrow to pinch to fall off. Now. I haven't cinched this up, I can't really move this D loop. But anyway, look, probably he didn't click the knock on enough and he dry fired his bow. That's the basic thing. Now, most bows are pretty similar in the market um, today, and this Bowtech, the amplifier, is a few steps down from the normal Bowtech. So it doesn't have the ability to adjust the cams left to right. I'm going to guess it doesn't have some of the features that the Top of the line Bowtex have, which is pretty amazing stuff like the interchangeable grips, the movable cable guard. That's not on the amplifier, but this still does have some cool features. <coughs> right, so you've got a limb stop here on the top cam. So this is going to hit the cam, hit the limb when you draw it to give you a rock solid wall. It's got rotating modules here, so you don't need a bow press to adjust the draw length, and you can also flip these modules to create two different types of feel. One's a soft feel and one's a fast feel, so more speed or less speed, depending if you want a smoother draw or a faster draw. Faster arrow or, or slower arrow, depends what you prefer. Um, the limb pockets are kind of unique, they kind of, well they, they are built into the riser here, they are plastic and they do lock in. It's got a weight on the side here, that's like a lot of the top of the range Bowtex. The limbs are a standard limb that you get on all bows these days. Um, the grip's a plastic grip. It's not interchangeable like the Bowtex where you can change the um, angle and stuff. Basic cable um, basic cable guard and a slide. The cams look a bit unique. They're big and so I guess this bow's got a bit of speed. And it's got some weight here. I guess that increases the speed of the bow. Um, it comes in a green, grey, I think it comes in camo and probably black. It's adjustable from 21 to 30 inches, axle axle 31.5, speed of 335 if it does that, that's amazing. Um, brace height of 6 inches, draw weight is adjustable from 8 to 70 pounds, that's incredible. And what's good about that, you've got a limb stop here, so normally when you wind down a bow, from maximum, the strings and cables become sloppy. So the, as you draw back, it's sloppy at the back. So you draw back over the peak in the valley, it's all sloppy on the back wall. So you vary your draw length with the limb stock, but you're not going to do that. So that's good. Mass weight of four pounds, which is nice. It's good for a beginner, nice for a hunter. Um, look, it's got some little signatures there to say who built the bow. Look, price point on this. If you're happy for me to guess, um, I think it's about $1,000 for the bow in Australia. So I'm guessing it's like 600 American. It kind of prices a little bit above the other competitors' bows in the same sort of price point. But then you could argue it's got more features than the other competitors' bows at the same sort of price point. But it, to me it's kind of a bit weird because there's a mid... There's a beginner price point, which Bow point, Bowtech is not in. Then there's a mid price point, which is where this bow is. And this bow is a little bit more expensive than that. And then there's the top end, where Bowtech is, obviously most of their bows are in the top end. And they tend to be a little bit more expensive than most of the competitors in the top of the range. They've done that with this bow as well. But you could argue, well, it's got flippable modules, so you get different feels. You don't have to buy modules like you do with other um, companies but look the, I, I'm gonna say I think the sights a little bit disappointing the three point three pin sight 
be better if it was a fire pin sight with fiber optics wrapped around. Um, the stabilizer is a fairly basic Bowtech stabilizer. It's not the expensive Bowtech um, quiver, but it's it's functional. Um, so to me, the kit's okay. It's just not great, and there's no peep sight in the string, which is another little bit disappointing. Um, so we're gonna to we're gonna wind this bow down first off because it's set on 70 pounds, and I don't want to do my shoulder. To wind the bow down, um, you've got a locking nut on there, just behind the weight, and there you got to loosen that off first, and then wind this out. So we're gonna wind this down to 60 pounds. We're going to um, then shoot the bow. Now, one thing I do like about Bowtech, a lot of companies have A, B, C, and D for their modules. Bowtech just label them 21 to 20 to 31, just if you can kind of see it just there. Um, makes life easy for the user, it makes life easy for the shop. Um, like, it's a good, that's a good system. Like, it's so simple. I'm not sure why, well, I do know why other people don't do it because they use the same cans on all their bows. And as a result, their draw length is different for every bow because every cam is the same for all the bows. But but Bowtech make this cam for this bow so it's unique. So the draw length is measured on the side, which is good. The cam's got roller bearings in here, which is good. Um, so we're going to wind this bow down to 60 and set it on 29 inches. We're going to chronograph it, shoot it only meters and see how this bow feels. Okay, so I've adjusted the draw stop to 29. Uh, rotate the modules, which is very easy to do. Um, this little rubber thing here, this rubber is so soft and you need to remove it to get access to this. Now the thing which is a bit weird, this is a Torx, everything else is Allen keys, so you need a Torx to loosen that off. Um, that's so, so soft rubber. It kind of feels like slime. Um, two and a half turns, takes this bow from 70 to 60 pounds. Um, very easy to do. Um, let's just look at the balance of the bow. Now this obviously has the stabilizer on, perfectly balanced. Now what's interesting for me is this grip. Um, so if you're familiar with Hoyts, all Hoyts have the same grips except for hunting bows and target bows and the target bows all have the same grip and the hunting bows all have the same grip. PSE, all bows are the same. Um, elites, most of the bows are the same with a kind of a unique grip and most of the Bowtex are the same. So, and that's generally because the designer of the bow kind of likes the grip that they build. This is slightly different than the other Bowtex. The other Bowtex are more square. This is slightly curved on the edge, um, and it's curved up here. So it's a, it's more, it's, I'm gonna say it's not like a Bowtech grip. It's, I'm gonna say it's more like the Hoyt hunting grip, but it's not, it's different. It's a bit squarer than that. It's a. It's a very different grip, which is interesting because most of the industries' grips are very similar. This grip is, is very different. Oh, the other thing I like is, see here how the quiver's almost touching the ARS? I like to probably move the quiver back a bit, and you've got the ability to do that by moving those screws to there, and that moves the quiver back. I would have liked to move the ARS in, but it is what it is. Right, so we're going to take a shot. Now, I'm going to say about dry firing bows because this customer dry fired this bow. I'm going to say um, Bowtech are going to do it under warranty. They don't need to. They're going to provide me new new parts, new cams, new strings because I asked them nicely. Um, they don't need to. They could say it's like crashing a car, Stephen. But for a dealer, it's a cost. For Bowtech, it's a cost. Um, it's time, you're going to argue with the customer about it, and the chances are the customer's going to do it again. Um, it's a one of the reasons I do these videos is not only to like tell you a bit about the bow and for myself to learn about the bow, but to teach people because I had so many dry fires I used to get. Of all the people I teach, so I teach about two people a day to shoot bows, I sell you know a couple of bows, well, I sell lots of bows, but I personally teach a couple of people a day to shoot bows. And of all the people I teach, I don't think I've had a dry fire. Um, well, you know, like I might have where a person forgets to load an arrow, but I haven't had any of the derails because you teach them properly. 
um, you say, look, this is what's going to happen if you forget to load an arrow. Um, it's not covered by warranty. This is what's going to happen. And the people are generally pretty good about it. Um, the most important thing is the grip. You need your knuckles are at 45 degrees. You need your lifeline, which I always, this is my lifeline here. This needs to be pointing down. The hand sits like that and it basically pivots just there. Um, now don't draw back with your finger on the thumb because you're going to punch yourself in the mouth and then you're going to blame the trigger, which the customer also did. Um, and he's going to say, well, I'm having a go at him. But like for a shot, like the margins are rubbish for archery. And when you have these type of warranties that are not warranties, like they test these bows for 20 odd years, 30 years of shooting. Like I've got bows that are 40 years old and still being shot. It's, and you buy the bow and the first week it blows up. Like, probably you had it at 70 pound, you're probably struggling to pull it back. Um, like always have the bow easy to pull back. You don't want to be straining, especially for a newbie. So let's try the draw. This starts off really solid. So 335 is more than possible. So, the very first inch, it's solid, and it feels like it's the same poundage all the way through the draw cycle. These are big cams, so you're not getting a sort of a... It builds up straight away, and it's solid all the way through that draw. And there it dumps. It's quite a... We're going to shoot this shot. Two nine seven. That's with a three twenty seven grain arrow. It's a gold tip velocity, four hundred twenty nine inches long with a eighty grain point. I think um, two nine seven's all right. So it it drops off. It's not as rapid as some, but it's definitely more rapid than others. <laughs> um, Bowtech has got a thing of generally dropping off at the very end, but it's not like it's sharp. It kind of drops back like that. So it drops, I suppose it hits, it goes from peak to valley about that sort of distance. And then it's rock solid because you're hitting the wall here. Um, look, it's it's quite comfortable um, when to, to draw. So it's not, it's not as smooth as some bows and it's not smooth as some Botex. The grip is very, very different. Look, there's no vibration after the shot. The bow's very quiet. Um, that was 276 with a um, Victory VAP 350 grain, 140 grain point. I think they weigh 395 grains, 276. The bow's very good after the shot. It just sits there, no vibration. The draw is pretty good, and a lot of people like this draw. How does it rate to other bows at this draw? The bow I'm going to compare it to straight away is the PSE Drive. I'm going to say it's it's very comparable. This is a binary cam, so twin cams. Um, maybe the drive is smoother. Maybe this is faster. But you've got the ability to flip this to make this bow faster. Um, but it's it's not bad. It's it's not a bad bow. Um, Seven four with the uh, victory arrow. Look, it feels stable. It feels nice. Rather like the bow. Um, 
Gets back to price point. I'd probably like the bow a little bit cheaper. It's not to say it's a bad bow. It's just the top of the range Bowtex are so good. They are so good that it's like, I feel like for a little bit extra, you can get a, a little bit extra. For a little bit extra, you can get the top of the range bow that is awesome. And the top of the range bow is so good. But then maybe I am getting out of touch with value and like, you know, what five or six to seven hundred dollars is worth. Um, as far as a beginner's bow, this bow far exceeds a beginner's bow. It's, it's, it is a beginner's bow because you can adjust it from eight to seventy pounds. It's got all the draw length adjustment, easy done. You can fl flip it from smooth to fast. It's a very cool beginner's bow. But I think the price point puts it well beyond the beginner bow because most people, most beginners who come in and go, look, I've got this budget. Um, and most people, without even telling them about archery, have a budget. And the budget would be beyond this bow, which is a bit sad because this bow is a, is a really nice bow. Um, I just think it's going to be beyond the budget level and then for the intermediate archer, they're probably more likely to jump up to the top of the line Bowtech. Um, what we're we going to do, we're going to shoot this out and see how well I shoot. I think I'll shoot it well because um, it's very well balanced. And I'm a bit confused which bows I shoot well with now, but I'm thinking I shoot bows well that are well balanced. And this bow is really well balanced. The weight is excellent at four pounds, means it's suitable for ladies, kids bow hunters a lot of the bows are too heavy today you know that especially for beginners the bow mass weight is just too much and this this bow is very well it's got a very good weight to it so the the fittings are all nice this is really nicely put together like it, it's a very nice bow so let's go and shoot it out and see how well we shoot Okay, so I've sighted the bow in at 18 meters and they're in the gold, so hopefully we're okay. And it didn't take long, it probably took four shots. So um, let's see how we go. Um, the bow's feeling better to draw as I go. I looked up the price. Now, the accessories, so the bow itself is $9.50, the accessories are an extra $100. The sight's worth about $10. It's got a basic stabilizer, probably worth $20. It's the quiver's probably worth. I don't know, seventy dollars. So like, it's in the ballpark, but it's just like I prefer a five-pin side. I prefer a twenty, thirty-dollar side. Um, you still need a release aid. You still need arrows with it. Um, so I don't know if you better to go for the kit or just the bow. I'm thinking probably just the bow. Um, but then get the kit all assembled. Learn to shoot at the shop. I don't know if the shop teaches you to shoot, but you're better to learn to shoot. So how do I think I'll shoot? I think I'll shoot well. Um, the bow's got no vibration afterwards. The draw I'm getting more comfortable with. I like the draw. How do I think you could shoot with this bow? So let's say your mate buys the top of the range bow tech for $1,700 and you buy this because this is all you can afford. Um, I was going to say because you're married and he's not, but uh, <laughs> look, you could easily beat a beat a person shooting a $1,700 bow with this bow. It's good enough to do that. The thing is, the $1,700 bow is just nicer. It's just, it's just cooler. It's just, it's just cooler. I find the, the pins are actually hard to see because they don't have wrapped fiber. So like a lot more of the expensive sites will have fiber wrapping around the housing here. It's a lot better to see. Um,
Look, I'm finding the... <laughs> I'm finding the peep sight. There's no peep sight. Um, I'm, fi I'm comfortable with the draw. I'm finding it comfortable. The grip. I'm finding the grip comfortable now. To start off with, when I first picked this bow up, I was like, eh, I don't know if I like it. I really like the... I really like the top of the line Bowtech grips. I like... I, I just like them. And I'm like, I'm not liking this grip so much, but now I'm shooting it. My hand's getting used to it, and it's kind of positioning itself where it needs to be. I'm getting, I'm getting consistency with the grip, which is making my shot consistent. Um, well, I'm assuming my shot's consistent. Look, I, I think I'm, I think I'm shooting really well with this bow. It's, it's, I'm going to harp on this point. It's not the $1,700 Bowtech, which is awesome, but this is really good. There's no vibration, which I keep repeating. I'm liking the drawer. It's a solid wall. Quiet. Really like this bow. It's a yeah. When I started the review, I was like, "Well, how does this compare in the mid price?" It's better than the other mid price bows, I think. Look, I like the. I really like the drive from PSC. I think it's a solid bow. It's got a good cam system. But this is this is good. It's a very very good bow to shoot. Okay, so what's the benefits of this bow over something like the drive? Well, it's got more adjustability to start with. It's got more poundage adjustability. It's got more um, draw length adjustability. It's got a dead stop at the end, the limb stop, which is good. Um, It's got, it's got the flip module, so you can go from fast to smooth, which the drive doesn't have. The drive's my second biggest selling bow. Um, second, it might even be my biggest selling bow now. And I think this bow is very comparable to it, as far as it may be better. Um, Let's just shoot one more. I think I think I'm shooting really, really amazingly well with this bow. Oh, it's just like now. Look, this this knock here shouldn't be shot. It's um, it's been struck before. I'm going to shoot it. it. Shouldn't be shot. This is how you dry fire a bow. Um, You may you may have damaged the knock and then you shoot the bow and not notice it and then the knock fails when you shoot, arrow drops in front of you and you've dry fired the bow and you've blown up the bow. Um, I really, really. I really like this bow. It's um, I love the weight. The uh, more expensive Bowtex are going to be heavier. Um, the pin is just settling on the center of the target. I'm not getting any vibration with it. I think it's very good. Let's go and take a look. Okay, so I'm at the target. Obviously, that's an awesome group. It's uh, no peep sight. 
hunting bow, 330 feet per second is a cheaper bow. It's good, like it's really, really good. Um, now I'm going to just talk a bit about Bowtech. Um, Bowtech's changed ownerships a number of times. I'm going to say the new owners have gone beyond the call of duty as far as warranty, fixing up. They just fixed up a bow for me that was probably over 20 years old. They supplied me a set of limbs for a bow which was 20 years old. Um, one of the owners before this group of owners, they wouldn't. They were like, no, we're not doing it. And it's um, it kind of kills the brand. And the, the backup now that I'm getting, like with this guy who, when I started this review, you know, the guy dry fired his bow, like they fixed it for me. It takes the pressure off me. Like the customer may or may not be happy that he's going to wait for it. Well, he's not going to be happy. Uh, <laughs> that's the way life is, right? Um, but they're standing there, they're backing the products. Now, besides the dry fires, and I think that's the only dry fire I've had. And I'm going to guess there's been another one, but I sell lots of Botex. I sell a lot of Botex. Um, they are the only two warranties I can think of. Um, it's been a couple of years now. Um, and they're the only two warranties I can think of. I can think of the guy this week, and maybe my memory's short, but Botex has been extremely dependable because people dry fire their bows all the time. So I should be getting heaps of warranties coming in. Not getting them. They've been a very dependable product. This bow, I think it's the right weight. It's so adjustable, it's excellent. When you adjust it down, it's gonna be good because of the draw stops. You can see this bow at 60, two and a half turns down on limb bolts. It's shooting just as well as it would for 70, which means if you wanna shoot this for target at 60 or target at 50 or target at 40, it's gonna shoot good. Um, you can experiment with the modules, you can change the modules to suit other people. I'm going to say Botex uh, make a good solid bow. I've sold Botex obviously for a number of years, going back 20 years, and people still shoot the Botex from 20 years ago, and they're still good bows. I've still, you know, people in my shop, people who work for me, still own Botex that I sold them 15 odd years ago. And they're like, that's a good bow. This is a good bow too. It's not the top of the range, but God, it feels good. It's a nice bow to shoot. Um, multiple sight positions, I'm guessing there. Um, I mean, obviously it'd be nice to have two, two RS, but look, overall the paints are high quality. It feels thick. The graphics on the limbs, I think look good. Um, I, I think this is a great bow for, for its price. Again, I would like it cheaper um, because I'd like to sell more product. Um, like if this was cheaper than the other mid-price bows, it would just kick. Um, but it does have more features than the other mid-price bows, so it is reasonable for it to be a little bit more expensive. It shoots good. I'm Stephen Ham from Archery Supplies. That's the Bowtech Amplify. Check it out at your local archery shop. Uh, if you've shot one, um, it's pretty much like the Convergence. Um, if you've shot one and you've shot other bows that are similar, you can drop a little message down there which you think is the best mid-price bow on the market. I think this is pretty good. Thanks for watching.